Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a manual buttonhole. So, there are a number of reasons why you might need to do a manual buttonhole. It might be that your sewing machine has an automatic or one step buttonhole function, but perhaps the button that you are using for this project is larger than the largest size the automatic or one step buttonhole will do. In that case, you're going to need to do it manually. Another reason why you might want to do a manual buttonhole is if your sewing machine doesn't actually have a buttonhole function at all. As long as you have a zigzag function and the ability to amend the width and the length of those zigzags, you can still do a buttonhole. Now, I will sort of divide this tutorial up because I'm going to be showing you a couple of different methods for doing a manual buttonhole. We'll look at doing a manual buttonhole on my Benina machine. And then I'm going to show you how to do a manual buttonhole on my Husqvarna machine. They're slightly different. Finally, I'm going to show you how to do a manual buttonhole if your machine doesn't have a buttonhole function at all. So you're going to need to program all of the stitches yourself. You're going to be amending different zigzag stitches to create the buttonhole. Let's start by looking at how to do the buttonhole manually on my Benina machine. If you're planning on doing a manual buttonhole, you're going to want to use a manual buttonhole foot. Now this is the foot three manual buttonhole for my Benina. And this foot here is foot C for the Husqvarna Emerald. Now these feet may come with your sewing machine or you may have to purchase them as extra. Now both of these feet have grooves underneath. This is to help the fabric to travel and feed smoothly through the sewing machine when the machine is stitching the satin stitches or the beads for either side of the buttonhole. It will also help to keep the two columns of stitching parallel and a nice neat buttonhole. Now there are many reasons why you might want to do a manual buttonhole, but one of them is because perhaps your sewing machine has one of these automatic buttonhole feet and your button is too large to fit in the back of this area here. Therefore, you will need to do a manual buttonhole. When completing a manual buttonhole on my Benina sewing machine or any buttonhole, it's recommended that the thread is positioned through the tiny hole in the arm of the bobbin case here. So take the thread once you position the bobbin in as normal and thread it through the tiny little hole just like so and this will create a slightly tighter tension for your bobbin and it will make the beads or the stitches on the right side of the buttonhole appear more pronounced and just look nicer. Do check your individual manual if you're not working with the Benina to see what it recommends. So I have changed to foot three which is the manual buttonhole foot. I'm then going to start by doing a manual buttonhole with a standard buttonhole. So I'm going to need to choose stitch number 10 on my machine. Now for any manual buttonhole, you are always going to want to mark the central line of the buttonhole and the start and end as horizontal lines because you are in charge of how this buttonhole looks. Just like with all of the other buttonholes, you are going to need to line everything up. So you're going to want to position the foot down. The vertical line or the central line of the buttonhole needs to be in the center of the foot. And you should be able to line that up with sort of this central knobble on the end of the foot. There's a bit of a central line here. And the needle needs to be going in on the horizontal line. Turn the handwheel towards you to check that the needle is in the right place. The most important thing is that the needle is going in on the horizontal line and the vertical or central line of the buttonhole is centered in the foot. Once you are happy, you can sew the first row of satin stitch down the left hand side of the buttonhole. Obviously, you need to make sure that your fabric has some interfacing, perhaps you might need some stabilizer. And I talk about all of this in my introduction to buttonholes video if you're interested. Now I have amended the length of my stitch slightly. I wanted to make sure that the satin stitches were nice and close together. So I'm doing probably about 0.4 on my machine in terms of lengths. It might be a good idea to do a standard one first and then you can amend the length of the stitches if required. Now we are coming to the horizontal line. I need to make sure that my needle finishes right on this horizontal line. Turn the handle towards you if you need to to create a stitch to do that. Once you're happy that you're on that horizontal line with the needle up, 
you're going to press the reverse button. This is going to inform the machine that you have finished sewing down the one side and you're then going to sew tiny little stitches away from you, so a reverse stitch away from you. You should simply be guiding the fabric through the machine here, not pushing or pulling it, just trying to keep it straight. When you get to the start of the buttonhole, the start, the original horizontal line, again, stop with the needle up. Use the hand wheel if you need to, press the reverse button. This will now inform the machine to do the starting bar tack. Once it has done the starting bar tack, it will then sew towards you doing the other bead down the right hand side of the buttonhole. Try and keep a similar speed on the machine that you were doing for the other side of the buttonhole. If you sew with a similar speed, and I would recommend not sewing too quickly, you will generally find that the beads and the stitches in the buttonhole look more symmetrical and even. Once you get back to the horizontal line at the end of the buttonhole, make sure that you finish right on this line with the needle raised. Then possess, press the reverse button again and the machine will complete a bar tack for the end of the buttonhole. The machine will also stop sewing when it is finished. And that is a manual standard buttonhole on the machine. Let's take a look. There you go, that looks pretty good to me. As I said, I did decrease the length of my stitches slightly. I am on 0.3 and the standard is 0.5. You may want to have a play with this, but I would recommend doing a practice one first. As with all buttonholes, you must always do a practice one before doing the real one on your garment. To finish this, you would need to trim or tie off your threads and cut open the buttonhole. If you're unsure how to do this, I would recommend watching my introduction video. Now we're going to look at how to do a manual buttonhole on my Husqvarna Emerald machine. This machine setup is quite similar to other sort of more basic machines. You're going to want to set the sewing machine up as if it was doing a buttonhole, an automatic buttonhole in fact. I'm going to choose the button hole on my stitch, and this is the dial that chooses the stitch. And then on this dial, which is the dial that chooses the length, I'm also going to go to the buttonhole. If you've watched my automatic buttonhole video, you will know that the closer to zero you go, closer together the stitches will be. So this is the length choice. Personally, I prefer to do my buttonholes closer to zero, but make sure that you're not too close to zero because then you'll find that the stitches won't move and your fabric won't move through the sewing machine. I have positioned on my manual buttonhole foot, which is foot C on this machine. Now I'm also going to need to pull down, I've got a little guide on the left hand side here and this is what you use for the automatic buttonhole but we will also use it for the manual buttonhole to inform the machine when we wish to turn around. Just like with the other manual buttonholes I have drawn on my buttonhole, the central line and the horizontal starting and ending points. Now on this machine, the machine starts at this point here, sews away from you and then sews back towards you. So I'm going to need to line everything up in my buttonhole foot. I want to have the central line of my buttonhole in the center of my foot. I often take a peek from the back of the machine as well on this machine to make sure that the line for the center of the buttonhole is coming through the foot straight. You then also want to make sure that your needle is going in on that horizontal line. It might not be where the horizontal and vertical lines meet, but the needle must enter the fabric on the horizontal line and the center point of the buttonhole needs to be going centrally. Now you're going to start sewing. The machine will begin by sewing a large bar tack stitch at the start. And then it will sew the bead on one side of the buttonhole. You simply need to guide the fabric through the machine here. You do not need to push or pull the fabric. You're just guiding it, making sure that it's staying straight. Now, when you near the end of the buttonhole, you need to make sure that the needle is finishing on that horizontal line. Use the hand wheel if you need to, turn the hand wheel towards you to allow the needle to finish on the horizontal end line. Now, whilst the needle is in the air, you're going to push the lever at the back here towards you. And you should hear a click. 
That means that the machine now knows it needs to sew across the top of the buttonhole and then back towards you. When you get to the end of the buttonhole, you will need to stop sewing. And that is how to do a manual buttonhole on this machine. Obviously, you're going to need to tidy the threads and you will need to cut and open this buttonhole. You can have a play with the length of the stitches here. Feel free to turn your length dial closer to zero. That will make the stitches closer together. However, do be cautious that you don't go too close to zero. If the stitches are too close to zero, the fabric won't move through the sewing machine and will build up a large lump that you will need to unpick. When doing a manual buttonhole on this machine, you must still remember to reset the machine. Turn to this sort of back stitch button and you should hear a click. That shows that the machine will now remember when you go back to buttonhole to begin again from the start of the buttonhole. Finally, we're going to have a look at how to do a manual buttonhole if your machine doesn't have a buttonhole function. You need to have the zigzag function and you need to be able to amend the width and the length of the zigzag function. Now, you're going to want to put a foot on, if you've got a choice of feet that is, where you can just see what you're doing. Obviously, I do have a buttonhole foot for this machine, but for this example, I'm gonna show you using a different foot. So either I would suggest a clear foot so that you can see what you're doing or sort of an open toe foot like this. You are going to need to draw the whole of your button on, the, the central line and the starting and ending lines. And then you're going to need to set your machine up for a zigzag. On my machine, that is stitch two. I'm going to need to amend the width and the length of my zigzag. And this might take a little bit of practice, so I would recommend that you practice this and trial it out first. The width of the zigzag stitch that I'm using is two millimeters and the length is 0.2. I also have the ability to move my needle on my machine and I'm moving it over to the left. So you're going to want to begin at the starting point and you want your needle to go in on that top horizontal line because that's your starting point. You want to line everything up so that it is nice and straight in your foot or as straight as it can be. And then you're going to do this satin stitch down the left hand side of your buttonhole. Now you're effectively doing a satin stitch here. If you'd like to learn more about a satin stitch, I do have a video on how to do a satin stitch. You want the stitches to be close enough to zero so that they look nice, but you don't want them to be too close to zero where you'll end up having problems with the sewing machine feeding this through. When you get to the horizontal line at the end, finish with the needle raised. A length of zero and a width of 5.5 millimeters. Make sure the needle is going in on the horizontal line and stitch across. You need to do about five stitches with the needle finishing on the right hand side. Position the needle into the fabric, lift the presser foot and turn your work. Now you're going to need to sort of line things up again when you bring it round to this side. So I've raised the needle using the hand wheel and you're going to want to line it up so that your central line is in the middle of the foot. You need to return to the original length of 0.3 and width of two millimeters. Make sure the needle is over to the left, which it is now. And then you can continue doing the setting stitch down the left hand side again. I would recommend testing this a couple of times. You want to test it to get the stitches correct and then practice doing this because it is a little bit trickier than doing a standard buttonhole or even a standard manual buttonhole on the sewing machine. When you get to the end, the horizontal line again, you're going to need to change your settings back to the larger zigzag. On my machine, this was 5.5 millimeters for the width and zero millimeters for the length. You may find that the width can be narrow on your machine. On other machines I've used, it can be four millimeters because that's the maximum. The width of the bar tack across the top needs to cover the top of both satin stitches. Stitch approximately five times, and then I would recommend actually changing your machine back to a straight stitch. Change it back to a straight stitch with zero length and simply stitch on top of yourself about three or four times. This will secure the buttonhole. Then you can take everything out of the machine and you can open this buttonhole as normal.
Feel free to have a play with the width of the stitches and the length of the stitches to work for you. You can also have a play with the size of the gap that you leave in the middle. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you feel more confident about doing manual buttonholes on your machine.